If you want to become a renaissance person, learning how to speed read is going to be an indispensable skill. And it's similar to learning how to spin a book on your finger, in that it's very simple in theory, but when you try to master the skill you realize it's going to take months. Because at its core, learning how to speed read is about cultivating new reading habits. So I'm not going to promise that you'll be able to do this overnight, but I will promise that by the end of the video, you'll know everything you need to know to start learning how to speed read. Fantastic. So we're going to learn how to speed read in one video. The first thing I need you to get is a piece of paper and a pen, or you can construct a mind palace if that's the kind of thing that you're into. And then I'm surrounded by books because I'm going to give you practical examples of how I've applied these theories. So you're going to have three levels. The first level will be before you read. The second level is when you are reading. And the third level is sort of advanced techniques or supplementary techniques. The first tier simply consists of three P's. This first tier is important because we're making sure that we're in the right mindset when we approach reading. Purpose simply entails giving yourself a one or two sentence summary of why you're engaging with this reading content. The easiest way to explain this is to illustrate it by means of example, but it goes hand in hand with pace. So you want to define the purpose and you want to define the pace that you want to read at because you can't read everything at the same pace. You're not going to read a novel at the same pace you read a textbook. So when I do read before I go to bed, I'm reading novels. The purpose is for relaxation and enjoyment. The pace that I want to go at is about medium because I'm not trying to go fast. I'm trying to enjoy the stories. When I'm reading Malcolm Gladwell or other nonfiction, it's uh, for interest's sake. Yes, that's the purpose. But I also want to engage with the content to such a level where I can retell these stories in a social setting. When I'm reading screenwriting content or artificial intelligence or research papers for a master's research, I'm taking it slow. <laughs> I'm taking it slow because I want to engage with the content and the purpose is to um, understand, to draw sort of the big ideas, but then also understand the nuance of what the author is saying. That's purpose and pace defined in a nutshell. The third thing is preview. Now, understanding preview is important because you need to know that your brain is allocating capacity towards figuring out where the author is going with what he or she is writing. And then it's also allocating capacity to understanding what is being said. Now, this can go one of two ways. When you're reading a novel, you probably don't want to preview because, <laughs> spoiler alert, but when you're studying material, when you're going through textbooks or material that you want to learn off by heart, that kind of thing, you definitely want to preview. Um, you can do that by looking at the contents. You look at each chapter's introductory and conclusion paragraphs. You can look at the subheadings in each chapter, look at the figures and look at bolded or italicized words and the definitions that might be given. This way, your brain is not not going to allocate capacity towards figuring out where the author is going and you're going to be more capable of understanding and comprehending what is actually being read because you can allocate all of your brain capacity to that. So it makes your reading more effective. And that's the first tier done. Quick exercise. Our minds are pretty much like a forest and we need to tread mental pathways to our memories. So I want you to try to recall the first three elements of speed reading. you get them? Purpose pace and preview. Well done. The second tier, <laughs> the sort of backbone to speed reading. You can write these down. It's a S C S. The first speed reading technique is called spacing. Now what you do here is you look at the spaces between words instead of fixating on every word and then you train yourself to gradually look at the spaces between every second, third or fourth word so that you're seeing more words at once and in such increasing your reading speed. Now how you want to practice this is you want to take a piece of text and you want to choose a paragraph and then read that paragraph by looking at the spaces between every word and then you want to reread the paragraph by looking at the spaces between every second word and such you trying to soften your gaze so that you see more words than one at a time. Then you're going to reread it again, looking at the spaces between every third word. And then you'll do it again, looking at the space between every fourth word. Now, I uh, think it's important to note that the first week that I tried to learn speed reading, this was one of the things where I tripped up. I tried to go way too fast. And I'm going to say this now and I'm going to say it again. Control is much more important at this stage than speed is. The second speed reading technique is called chunking. Now, Spacing and chunking are interchangeable and it's a personal preference kind of thing. With chunking, you're trying to see logical phrases of words. With chunking, you're trying to see 
logical phrases of words. So that's how you're going to read. You're going to read by trying to see those phrases. Again, this takes time and you want to go through that same repetitive process of taking a paragraph, reading it three or four times and trying to see those logical phrases. Taking another paragraph, trying to do that. This way you can develop a feel for which works better for you, spacing or chunking, and then you can choose one and take that one and try to master it. Again, with both spacing and chunking, Control over speed. I know it sounds strange, but the key to speed reading is going slow at this stage. The third element to the second tier is subvocalization. Now, subvocalization has sort of extreme forms and then subtler forms. The extreme form is you're actually whispering the words or you're moving your lips when you're reading. But there's a catch. The relationship between success and IQ works only up to a point. Now you want to stop this definitely because it adds an unnecessary step to your reading process. You're seeing and then comprehending and then saying. Well, if you can cut that out, you're only seeing and you're comprehending. Listening to music has helped me, classical music especially, um, to sort of not focus on that little reading voice too much, but then also realizing the fact, and the author in the book mentions this, when you hit a certain reading speed, about 250 to 260 words per minute and upwards, you aren't able to say every word explicitly in your head. Listen to what 260 words per minute sounds like. Now, what I took away from this is that if I'm reading above 250 words per minute, I'm probably not sub vocalizing each and every word. So I know that it's important and this is still something that I'm practicing, but I know that in the extreme cases, and that's why I'm mentioning it, if you are whispering or moving your lips to your reading, you do have to stop that. That concludes tier two. Fantastic. Let's try to recall all six of the speed reading elements that we learned thus far. Purpose, pace, and preview. Spacing, chunking, and subvocalizing. Well done. We're going to learn why recall is so important in the next tier. The third tier consists of supplementary techniques that both help increase speed and comprehension. Here you want to draw a P, R, and an R. The first technique, P, stands for peripheral vision. Now, we're used to using our peripheral vision when we play sports, and we have to use our peripheral vision when we either employing space reading or chunking, but we're not used to using our peripheral vision when we read. So three ways in which you can practice this. The Since filming this segment of the video, I've actually found two apps that help you train your peripheral vision. They're both just called speed reading, but I'll show you what they look like. The first contains a whole bunch of different exercises um, purely aimed towards increasing your peripheral vision. This is kind of fun and it makes it easy to train your peripheral vision. And then the second one contains a more comprehensive program which allows you to test your reading speed, go through a daily training exercise and then test your reading speed again. I'd highly recommend using these kinds of apps because it makes it easier to train the specific parts of speed reading, it makes it easy for you to on a daily basis work at it little by little as you build these habits. Also, I had to figure out a way to work old Beethoven into this video. <laughs> he has to feature in all of these videos. The second element in this final tier is regression. Now, regression in layman's terms is rereading what you've already read, and I know that we've all had this experience. It's obvious that regressing slows you down. Um, and we do regress because we weren't paying attention most of the times. Now, the way in which you practice not regressing is by not allowing yourself to regress. How I do this is when I'm reading before I'm going to bed and I sort of, my mind wandered and I realized that I wasn't paying attention, I don't allow myself to go back and reread what I missed. Um, this is irritating and it's abrasive because you oftentimes feel like you missed other important information or interesting information, but it really is the only way that you're gonna train your brain to engage with what you're reading because you know that you're not going to be allowed to reread it. Obviously, no one's perfect. I do regress, um, but I try to set that standard of not regressing and work towards that. That's the important part. A little note on regression. I want to show you what I did to uh, Robert McKee's book story. Um, I would read for big ideas and then I would go back and summarize and underline and go crazy and flag. Um, so regression isn't always a terrible thing, but for the most part, when you're reading, you want to read as quick as possible and you don't want to regress. The final element and arguably my opinion, the most important is recall. Recall can take the form of quizzing yourself on what you have just read.
Or if I'm returning to a book after one or two days of not reading, trying to recall what I read in my previous reading session. This is absolutely critical because one, it teaches your brain to actively engage with what you are reading because later on you know that you're going to have to recall what you read and it helps you to retain that information because the more thoroughly you can sort of recall work or the, the greater detail with which you can recall the work, obviously the easier that's committed to long-term memory. Now this is so important when it comes to studying, I can't overstate it. I'll make another video about that, park that idea. How I do this. When I read, before I go to bed, I try to recall the couple of pages that I read the night before. Um, when I sit down to read Malcolm Gladwell, I try to remember the previous reading sessions statistics or the stories that he told or the conclusions that he came to. And then I have another technique with Malcolm Gladwell's books and in general I apply this to the nonfiction that I read where I circle one or two words on a page. Um, Circling keywords helps me to sort of anchor my thoughts when I recall so I can try and remember those keywords and the information surrounding those uh, words. But when I finish recalling, I can go and review and try to spot check if I remembered everything correctly and if I had sort of touched all the bases by simply looking at the words on each page. Makes the whole process very quick. That's it. It is the final, the final recall test. So, I want you to try to recall all nine speed reading elements before I drop this book. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> okay, try again. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Ooh, this is... <gasps> that was really... That was, that was probably the best. The best one. <laughs> I'm glad you could share that with me. So I've got some, I want to share something with you, some parting thoughts. I've not been using those speed reading apps. I just, I don't know, okay. <laughs> it gets kind of boring. So don't feel bad if you don't use them. Um, what I have found helps is I've already got a daily reading habit, um, which takes sort of multiple shapes and forms. And then I'll just try to tweak that a little bit by um, going through the purpose pace and pre-reading steps or preview steps and trying to not sub vocalize so i'd implement these um, elements into my pre-existing habits which i think is a better way to go about it and i'd recommend that so try to tweak the habits that you already have only slightly because then you have a larger um, probability of achieving success in the long run so i know that um, by not being intense about it, obviously it's going to take me longer to become proficient at speed reading, but that's okay. I'd rather go for that. Slow changes that in the long run have a, a meaningful impact um, than trying to make bigger adjustments, failing, feeling kind of sucky about not being able to do it, and then you end up just abandoning it completely. So try not to fall into that cycle. Fantastic. I know you guys have one last question. How many... <laughs> Malcolm Gladwell books does Chris actually own? <laughs> Let me show you. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and consider sharing this video on your WhatsApp story. That's how I support my favorite YouTubers. And... <laughs> There's people outside. <laughs> hope you have a good day. I got myself into a little situation